In the last episode of the Valencia career mode, we brought in a player from the club's past, Rodrigo, as well as a recent addition in Ferro. Despite an early exit from the Copa de España, we had a little bit of help and managed to qualify for Europa League. Hey, what's going on everyone? Flick here. Welcome back to another episode of our FIFA 21 Valencia career mode. This is episode 7 and the start of season 4, and coming off of the third season that saw a lot of twists and turns, we struggled in the Europa League, getting knocked out of the group stage, and we barely managed to qualify for the same competition this season. It took a seventh place league finish and a clutch performance from Atletico Madrid in the cup final that will allow us to take part in the qualifying round this season of Europa League. But there are some bright spots that I think we can look forward to in our save. Not only are most of our players growing in their overall, I'm pretty happy with our defense now. Maybe the only position that we might look to improve is at right back, as Correa really hasn't grown the last few seasons despite an early good performance from him. But there's been a lot of speculation about what we're going to do about Guedes. Considering that he was in pretty good form at the end of season three, I think we let him go now rather him leave as a hero than extend his stay too long. After all, he is one of the world's best players, and I'm sure we're going to get a number of transfer offers in this episode now that he is on the market. I was ecstatic to see that a lot of you were happy with the Rodrigo transfer. Of course, I like to bring back some former players at some point in the save, and it's something that we might look to do more of depending on how things go for the rest of this career mode. Obviously, it's too early to tell what kind of transfers we can make in future seasons, but after all, we're four seasons in, and now that we are again in European competitions, if you have any transfer suggestions, always feel free to leave that in the comment section. I'm happy to get you guys involved wherever possible. But if you are enjoying this Valencia save, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, so you can stay up to date when these episodes go live. I also wanted to mention that if you haven't already seen on my community tab, I posted a crew mode challenge collaboration that I'm doing with crew mode stars. You only have to play through one season in order to submit your Werder Bremen teams to the Twitter post. I'll leave that link in the description. We'll be reviewing the replies on Wednesday. So you have until then to submit your team. Now that we know what Geta's future is going to look like, we really don't need to worry about our transfer budget. With that said, the board continues to give us funds as we currently sit at 220 million in our transfer budget. It's actually going to be important for us to retain some of those funds because a financial board objective is looking to have us finish the season with a profit margin of 300 million. And because our manager rating is so low, board objectives are going to be a huge focus for me in season four. Youth development, we need to sign two youth academy players and feature them in 10 matches over the course of the season. I don't think that's too difficult because we can just bring them on as a sub. Brain exposure, we need to get a streak of five clean sheets in home league matches, as well as sign one crucial first team player as a defender. So maybe that'll be an area that we look to improve this season. I would say domestic and continental success is where we've struggled the most though in this save. This year, the board wants us to finish in a top four league position and qualify for Champions League next year and win the Copa de España. Continentally, they want us to win the Europa League. This is where things are going to start getting very interesting though, as Manchester City come in with a 100 and 74.2 million bid for Guedes. You might recall that Ferran Torres also left for Manchester City. This time though, we're able to get more than the player's market value. I was thinking that someone might actually meet his release clause of 200 million, but we were only able to bring up that transfer sum a little bit more at about 175 mil. 164 million of which is going to be added back to our transfer budget and that will complete the transfer for Guedes. As far as what we want to do with the excess funds, I think there are a few different options. Lino Messi is available as a free agent. Barcelona deciding not to renew his contract, despite him being a one club player. Despite having a good rating at 87, I'm not sure if we would be able to use him as a winger because you guys might know that as a player gets older in career mode, their physical stats tend to go down a lot. So his acceleration and sprint speed isn't the best. If we were to ever sign Messi in this save, he would probably be used more as a center forward. So instead, I've turned to Portugal to hopefully sign another Portuguese winger into the team. Sporting have finished fourth in the table for last season. They're also going to be in European competitions in the Europa League. So I would say Pedro Gonzalez would be open to making the move to Valencia. It's the next logical move in his career going to La Liga and maybe he can follow in the footsteps of Guedes and contribute even more goals and assists. Despite the fact that he's listed as a center midfielder in the squad file we're using, he can definitely play center attacking mid and out on the wing. As far as the transfer is concerned, we had to pay a lot for him, 122.1 million. But that really won't be an issue for us as he signs as a crucial first team player to a four-year deal worth 75 grand a week 
and another release clause set to 200 million. Here's a look at some of the debt plan options we have available. Center attacking mid would allow him to boost some of his pace shooting, passing, dribbling statistics, kind of the same thing for the left wing dev plan. But for now, we're just going to be using the box to box dev plan. And later down the line, we'll finalize what position we want Gonzalez to be. There were a couple of other deals that went down in this summer transfer window. You might recall Ozio Coop was the first transfer we made all the way back in season one when he was included as part of the swap deal for Sillison. He'll be going to Montpellier for 7 million, Sabrina leaving for 3.6 mil, and Jimenez going for 1.25 mil. As per usual, we're including a lot of players as part of loan deals, trying to get as many of our youth academy players out on loan so that they can see a good boost to their overall rating. Carrillo is included in that list because I think his potential has dropped to maybe showing great potential that might change when he goes out on loan. Same sort of thing for Jaime Pajuelo. Because these guys have such a great amount of potential, we should eventually see a good boost to their rating. But we did have two Youth Academy promotions this season. I'm actually going to be keeping these players in our team because we're trying to fulfill that youth development objective given to us by the board. So Marino is a left back from Italy, 84 to 90 potential with an overall of 65. Gutierrez, a center attacking mid center forward from Spain, 64 overall with potential of 82 to 94. They'll be getting the 10 appearances, most likely coming on in the final minutes of each match as a substitute. Three new scouting networks though, as we set up a scouting network in Spain for six months, looking for any type of player France for six months looking for a technically gifted player and Paraguay for six months looking for an attacker. The main reasoning that we did France and Paraguay this time around is because Valencia have had a couple of former players from France, Kevin Gamera way back in season one, season two, um, even some of our defenders as well. And then of course we know Rojas, one of the top goal scorers for the club is also from Paraguay. Some other things went down behind the scenes. I made sure to renew some contracts and also update the release clauses. That was probably most applicable for Musa because he went so much up in his overall when he was out on loan. I think a plus seven last season. So his release clause certainly needs to be going up all the way to 62.7 mil. And then just a bunch of dev plan changes. Now that we're a couple of seasons in, we just need to finalize some stats for the players in our starting 11. For example, Gaia going to an attacking wideback. Jorge Sainz to a stopper dev plan. Alvarez going from the stopper to the sweeper dev plan. Mark Roca, the center defensive midfield dev plan because that gives such a good boost to the pace, defending, and physical attributes. Finally, Ivan Gonzalez is most likely the best prospect that we found through youth scouting, and I'll probably change him to be a winger, but for now we'll be using the playmaker forward dev plan. That'll give him the needed boost to his attacking positioning and some of his passing, dribbling, and physical stats. A new look Valencia team for season four. We'll see how some of our new players like Gonzalez will perform. And I've updated some of the instructions because he's lacking in some departments like pace. We're going to have him come short and act more as a free roaming winger that can drift centrally and hopefully get some finesse shots. Sometimes a change of tactics is all you need and fingers crossed that'll do just the trick for us here at Valencia. But a combination of gameplay as we have both La Liga as well as European competitions with the Europa League, maybe this will be the season that we break through to the later stages of that competition. Our first match of season four is in La Liga against Hetafe. This is one of the sides that are always challenging for either a Champions League or Europa League spot. So I'm sure that they're striving to kick off their league campaign with three points, but we're also looking to get off to a good start as we have some new debutants. It is our new signing Gonzalez that gets involved straight away from the left wing position, spotting out the run from Rojas, unable to complete the pass this time around, but a promising start here. As we turn our attention to the defensive side of things, Hetafe hanging on to some possession outside the 18 yard box and a good effort by Funes Mori, just unable to get it on target though. As Lee spots out Soleil, this is a nice fake shot and he's going to tuck this one to the far corner. Our midfielder who has proven to be a box to box playmaker, both in terms of goal scoring and assists, will give us our first goal of season four. Lately, Rochic has gotten involved a lot from the center defensive mid position. He wins his back possession and fights through a couple of tackles eventually setting up Rojas with a pass. Keeper does well to come off of his line, and this will be the final chance here in the 46th minute, cleared away by Hitafe. But as you can see from all of these highlights, we were dominating possession, generating most of the goal scoring chances. Gonzalez with the finesse effort going narrowly wide. Usually it takes me a little bit of time before I fully get used to players and the goal scoring gets underway. Maybe that'll be something in future episodes for Gonzalez. 
But a scary moment as Hetafe nearly dragged that effort wide. Probably should have been the equalizer. But fortunately, as we get to the final minutes of the match, Soleil getting involved. It's Rojas finding Mark Rocca, coming on as a substitute, and he will give us the 2-0 lead in the 90th minute. Rocca is someone that we've recently brought in, but has been featuring more as of late. Initially, he was meant to be a rotational player for Rogic, but lately, I've been liking him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. This is exactly how I wanted to start our league campaign. A clean sheet and three points, as now we can focus on the Europa League. The single thing that we've struggled the most in for Europa League has been some of the simulated results. Like Poznan are our opponent for the Europa League qualifier, and unfortunately, we did lose the away leg 2-1. to one. The 90th minute winner from our opponents means that we need to get a great result at home and also put in a strong defensive performance to limit the number of away goals. Knowing this, we get off to a high-tempo start, and it's Gaia pushing up from the left-back position, getting inside the box, and just really not many players around him. Eventually, he found Soleil, but the ensuing header ricochets off of the crossbar, and it's going to be another chance for us, this time from the opposite wing, Rodrigo, our number 17, getting inside the box. He scored from this sort of range so many times before, but a good save from the Lech Poznan keeper as we send in a corner kick. That is a kick save, and that kind of summed up the beginning of this match. We definitely weren't limited in terms of our shots, just a number of good saves and some missed opportunities on a few occasions as I think 25 minutes in, this is probably our fifth or sixth, really good goal scoring opportunity. Rodrigo brings the ball down, Rojas with the header. That one is not on target. Finally, it's going to be a chance for Lech Poznan and they really just need the one chance to put themselves in front. That's certainly not how I expected this match to be going considering how much we were dominating possession and just the general momentum of this match. But fair play to Lech Poznan, we'll need to come back and score a few goals Hopefully, if we convert some of our chances, we can make that happen. As in the 36th minute, it's going to be Soleil feeding Rodrigo the ball, another far post effort, and another heroic block from the defender. As we push forward to the second half, maybe we need to start switching up some of our tactics. We need to be sure to not leave this match too late. If we do, I don't think we're going to be advancing to the Europa League group stage this season. Rodrigo does a really good job to get the ball to the byline, just a limited number of options in the middle as it's Soleil pushing up from the center midfield. He scored in our opener, and unfortunately he had that effort save, but it's Gonzalvez who nets his first goal for the club at a key moment. That brings us level on the day, and only down by one on aggregate. We need to get a second goal and not concede one if we want to force this match into extra time. Despite the limited highlights, Lech Poznan did convert a lot of their chances, as in the 68th minute, they will take the 2-1 lead on the day. And we're in a bit of trouble now because we need to win this match on aggregate. So score three goals in about 20 to 15 minutes. We get a little bit of luck on our side with that own goal. Would have been scored regardless had the defender not made any contact. But we'll take that and maybe that's the spark that we needed to get back into this match. And seeing this higher tempo from some of our players made me want to try out constant pressure more often. I know it drains stamina quite a bit. So we really just need to use it in certain scenarios as this goal from Lee will draw the match level on aggregate. We'll need one more goal though, otherwise Lech Poznan will advance on away goals. It's Lee trying to find the right player, Rojas, feeding Lee once more a fake shot to get the right angle, but it is cleared away by Lech Poznan. That'll be full time. And unfortunately, our dreams in the Europa League will come crashing down again. And I won't lie guys, this start to the season has gone so poorly. It made me reconsider some things about this Valencia save. Part of me wants to keep trying, but just looking at our performances in both Europa League and the cup, it has not been up to standards. On the other hand, there are some positives that we've had from this save so far. Youth Academy being one of them, Jose Contreras is by far the best value Youth Academy player I've found so far in FIFA 21. And this kind of leads me to believe that maybe we need to start incorporating our Youth Academy into more of the save and start fielding some of these players in our starting 11. Over the ensuing months, we'll be sticking the Dynamo dev plan on him, and then once the January transfer window rolls around, I'll try to set him out on loan so that we can get that nice boost to his rating. But because we've been knocked out of Europa League again, I figured we might as well switch up the squad and give Moose the start once again. He's got a bright future ahead of him, and he's quickly catching up to Rodrigo's rating. And I'm not sure if it was the change in personnel or whether the game was just giving us a break because all of a sudden we were picking up some results on the simulation nine matches into our La Liga season we were third in the league 
with a couple of key fixtures ahead. For now, we'll just try to go this month unbeaten as we match up against Huesca. And this will be a good test to see whether we can actually get the job done in the gameplay fixtures, forget about our results in the Europa League and focus on La Liga for the rest of the season. We'll start off these highlights with a good diagonal run from Rojas, setting up Musa with a chance. He's going to continue passing the ball around. And one thing I'll say about Gonzalez as an early impression is that he often finds himself in the right place at the right time. On that situation, he was offside, but you saw in the last match that he picked up that key goal off of the volley, and I think we'll see that some more throughout this season. But anyways, we're getting into the second half, still nil-nil, but we're looking to change that as Gonzalez and Rojas, some good one-two play. We also have the on-running Gaia as an option, but eventually it is Soleil who spots out the run from Musa. He's going to bury that effort in what was his first appearance this season. These are the sort of goals that we know he can score, and now that he's an even higher rated player, should be a little bit easier for us. Unfortunately, though, that lead will not be lasting long as Huesca are going to do some quick passes of their own. The near post shot seems to be the downfall of Fiamme this season. Maybe we need to start thinking about an upgrade at the goalkeeper position. That is tough to say because Xiaome has consistently been one of the top three keepers in La Liga. We're going to make a change with 20 minutes left to go. Rodrigo being brought on for Rojas as a striker rather than a right winger. But instead of being the goal scorer in this match, He's going to try to be the assist maker, spotting out the run from Soleil, who is proving to net a lot of goals for us this season. Not only that, he's popping up in key moments. This will give us the 2-1 to one advantage, and now we just need to see out the rest of this match. This is exactly what I mean about Musa, though. He is significantly better now than the last time he featured in this career mode, utilizing some of that pace, and he's going to go solo this time around. A near post effort will give us the three to one advantage. That's the second cinematic celebration for this episode. Maybe I'm being optimistic, but this could be the turning point for this Valencia save. We performed under expectations up till now, but putting trust in our original Valencia players and Youth Academy prospects seems to be the way to go moving forward. But first, we'll have to get a positive result against a fatigued athletic Bilbao side. We've had to rotate our starting 11 as well. Acosta making an appearance at the left center mid position. But all eyes were on Gonzalez, especially as he scores more goals for this Valencia team. We're already 20 minutes into these highlights. We have a chance off of a throw in Rojas spotting out Musa. And now it's just a matter of finding one of the many options in the middle. It's going to be Soleil who provides the passing presence and he will be taken out by one of the Athletic Club Bilbao players. Gotta say, Soleil has really stepped up since the first season where he suffered a pretty significant injury. But since then, he's been a presence for us in the midfield. He's also taken the majority of set pieces as we try a slightly different penalty kick tactic, converting that one to give us the 1-0 lead. We need to push on though and keep up that sort of pressure. Musa doing well to drag one of the defenders out wide and creating a gap in the back line of Athletic Club Bilbao. Rojas is going to use some of that pace. And it's Gonzalez right place at the right time. He's going to double our lead, giving us a 2-0 advantage 30 minutes into this match and marking what would have been his second or third goal so far at Valencia. Despite not being as highly rated as Guedes, he is contributing more goals. We'll see how long we can keep that up and maybe even improve Gonzalez's goal scoring tally as he continues to improve in his overall rating. A close call here, but another nice block by Ferro. We're one of the best defensive teams in all of La Liga this season. And our center back pairing of Ferro and Alvarez are a big reason for that. 60 minutes into the match, it's another chance for Bilbao to pull one back, but this chance was called back for offside. I think we started to let off some of the pressure and Bilbao. As a result, we're getting a lot of highlights toward the later stages of this match. I think that's something that we still need to work on in this save. Make sure that when we do have a lead, we can hang on to it as we try to score another one here. Rojas unable to get by the goalkeeper. Final highlight from Rojas and Mark Roca does well to get around one of the defenders and some good passing play and awareness to find Acosta. Unfortunately, the save was made by the post and this match will end 2-0. Although we could have scored more in this match, I can't take too much away from the team. We've got an entire month with winning every single match. Perhaps this is where the real test comes in, whether we can continue our winning form against the revamped Barcelona team. Only about half the original players are still at the club. Instead, they've signed about every high potential player in career mode. And to add to the storylines of this fixture, this match may put us top of the La Liga table if we can finally defeat Barcelona. We've had some pretty close run-ins with Barcelona in the past. Maybe this time around, we can turn the tides and pick up three points. Some good build-up play in the midfield, eventually finding Soleil 
be nice to see him continue his goal scoring form the initial effort blocked by the Barcelona defender and some nervy moments at the back for us as Xiaomei just about manages to get that one cleared it is going to be Ansu Fati who does send in this cross it's Franke de Jong in the middle and that headed effort will beat Hyame again on his near post. He's picked up his form as of late, but this was just one of those chances that are always going to find the back of the net. Still a lot of time left in this one, though, as we go all the way to the second half in the 55th minute. It's Mark Roca to somehow break through this Barcelona defense and a suspect moment from Mark andre Ter Stegen. He has been one of La Liga's best goalkeepers throughout this career mode and definitely one that we've struggled to score goals against. We get a break for this one to go in. Now, 70 minutes into the match, Pedro Gonzalez picks up the ball outside the 18-yard box, eventually sets up Rojas, and again, it's a weird animation from Ter Stegen, I swear. Ever since we got knocked out of EuroLeague, the game has given us multiple chances to redeem our season here at Valencia, and with only a few minutes left to go in this one, we may be picking up three points. It'd be nice if we could add a third goal just to further secure this advantage. Gonzalez picking up the ball, and dribbling this inside the 18, but brought to an end by Barcelona, and that will be full-time, finally picking up a win against Ronald Koeman's side. It took a little help from an out-of-form Ter Stegen, but we will certainly take this win and top La Liga. Whether we can keep that advantage at the top of the league is another story. Still a long road ahead, and we will turn our attention to Valladolid to close out today's episode with another match in the league. This wasn't a way fixture, and I think it's fair to say that a lot of eyes will be on us for the remainder of the season, so no match is a given win. We'll get off to a good start in this one, again holding on to possession outside the 18-yard box. That seems to be a recurring theme in this episode, and I think it's the right strategy because we can look for the right chances, like this one from Lee, getting his first goal of the episode. And although he struggled for form a little bit last season, you can't deny his numbers. He's typically in the top three players for both goals and assists. And I think numbers speak for themselves. So as long as he ranks up there, he's going to keep his place in the starting 11. As Lee setting up Soleil, our midfielders really getting involved in this start to season four as he doubles our lead in the 38th minute. We'll try to make it three before the halftime break. Gonzalez has seamlessly worked into this Valencia side. You'll love to see that especially with his transfer sum being as high as it was and this finesse shot effort nearly finding the top corner. What a way to round out the first half. Follow the lead, we'll try to answer back in the 60th minute. Plaza turning our defender and spotting out the run, but this call will go back for offside. Again, the refs are on our side in this episode in a lot of situations. As in the 87th minute, it's one final opportunity for them to maybe get one goal back. Probably won't change the result of this one. But again, a good save from Hyame as he keeps a clean sheet and we can close out today's episode with a win. While this season didn't have the best start in terms of form, I'm glad to see that we were able to turn it around and maybe we can keep this up for the next episode. This Valencia save continues to be full of surprises despite another underwhelming performance in the Europa League. La Liga has gone completely different than expected. We've just managed to pick up a lot of wins in a row and find ourselves third place by a pretty good margin. That does mean we're challenging for the league title. It's not going to be an easy task for us to achieve in this crew mode, let alone for season four, but maybe it's something that we can check off the list if we see some more good form for the rest of the season. Probably a big part of that is that Real Madrid is performing below expectations this season. Hopefully that'll stay the same, but I wouldn't be surprised if they see a bit of a resurgence and push for top four as well. We'll cover the top scorers and assists. It's Soleil from the midfield who actually leads the way for goals. Nine goals from 16 appearances. Gonzalez, he's been a great signing for us. Eight goals from 20. And Rodrigo also popping up in the top three, four goals from 13. Rojas kind of switching to an assist maker as he had seven assists from 20 appearances. I think he also led La Liga in assists last season. So continuing to prove he's a versatile player and plays whatever role in the squad is needed. Rodrigo also in the top three here with three assists from 13 appearances and Soleil with two assists from 16 along with a number of other players. We had a few promotions from our youth academy and I was really happy to see some of these guys break into the first team as Contreras might be one of the best youth academy players that we found so far. Going to try to get him out on loan as soon as possible and he should be up into the 80s for his overall sooner rather than later. The other promotion was Exposito, a winger from Spain. Most of the other prospects in our youth academy are also from Spain, but I'll be keeping my eye out to see if we should promote them or send them out on loan. But I want to thank channel members for helping to support the channel. If you are interested 
and becoming a part of the membership program, you can either click the join button below the video or click the link that's available in the description. You get access to a couple of emotes you can use both in the comment section for these videos, as well as the live streams we do here on YouTube. But as we push on to the next episode, I still don't know where things are going to go, whether we're going to be able to challenge for the league title, whether we're going to put more funds into the team and really make the push to take the next step in this crew mode. I'll be looking over the comments to see what your thoughts are, but if you did enjoy today's episode of the Valencia crew mode, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, but until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to y'all again soon.